you and I have had an opportunity to have a discussion, and it leads to the uh, following. We'll now cast a vote on the witness question, and once that vote is complete, I would ask that the Senate stand in recess, subject to call of the chair. Thank you. Without objection, so ordered. The question is, shall it be in order to consider and debate under the impeachment rules any motion to subpoena witnesses or documents? The yeas and nays are required under Senate Resolution 483. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Alexander. No. No. Ms. Baldwin. Aye. Aye. Mr. Barrasso. No. No. Mr. Bennett. Aye. Aye. Mrs. Blackburn. No. No. Mr. Blumenthal. Mr. Blunt. No. No. Mr. Booker. Yes. Aye. Mr. Bozeman. No. No. Mr. Braun. No. No. Mr. Brown. Aye. Aye. Mr. Burr. No. No. Ms. Cantwell. Aye. Aye. Mrs. Capito. No. No. Mr. Carden. Aye. Aye. Mr. Carper. Aye. Aye. Mr. Casey. Aye. Aye. Mr. Cassidy. <coughs> no. Ms. Collins. Aye. Aye. Mr. Coons. Aye. Mr. Cornyn. No. Ms. Cortez Masto. Aye. Mr. Cotton. No. Mr. Kramer. No. Mr. Crapo. No. Mr. Cruz. No. Mr. Danes. No. Ms. Duckworth. Aye. Mr. Durbin. Aye. Mr. Inzi. No. Ms. Ernst. Mrs. Feinstein. Aye. Ms. Ernst, no. Mrs. Fisher. No. Mr. Gardner. No. Mrs. Gillibrand. Aye. Mr. Graham. No. Mr. Grassley. No. Ms. Harris. Aye. Ms. Hassan. Aye. Mr. Hawley. No. Mr. Heinrich. Aye. Ms. Hirono. Aye. Mr. Hoven. No. Mrs. Hyde-Smith. No. No. Mr. Inhoff. No. Mr. Johnson. No. No. Mr. Jones. Aye. Mr. Kane. Aye. Mr. Kennedy. No. No. Mr. King. Aye, Ms. Klobuchar. Aye. Mr. Lankford. No. No. Mr. Leahy. Aye. Aye. Mr. Lee. No. No. Mrs. Loeffler. No. No. Mr. Manchin. Aye. Aye. Mr. Markey. Aye. Aye. (coughs) Mr. McConnell. No. Ms. McSally. No. Mr. Menendez. Aye. Aye. Mr. Merkley. Aye. Aye. Mr. Moran. No. No. Ms. Murkowski. No. Mr. Murphy. Aye. Aye. Mrs. Murray. Aye. Mr. Paul. No. No. Mr. Purdue. No. Mr. Peters. Aye. Aye. Mr. Portman. No. No. Mr. Reed. Aye. Aye. Mr. Risch. No. No. Mr. Roberts. No. No. Mr. Romney. Aye. Aye. Ms. Rosen. Aye. Aye. Mr. Rounds. No. Mr. Rubio. No. Mr. Sanders. Aye. Mr. Sass. No. Mr. Schatz. 
Aye. Mr. Schumer. Aye. Mr. Scott of Florida. No. No. Mr. Scott of South Carolina. No. Mrs. Shaheen. <coughs> Aye. Mr. Shelby. No. Miss Cinema. Aye. Aye. Miss Smith. Aye. Aye. Miss Stabenow. Aye. Aye. Mr. Sullivan. No. No. Mr. Tester. Aye. Aye. Mr. Thune. No. Mr. Tillis. No. Mr. Toomey. No. Mr. Udall. Aye. Mr. Van Hollen. Aye. Mr. Warner. Aye. Ms. Warren. Aye. Mr. Whitehouse. Aye. Mr. Wicker. No. Mr. Wyden. Aye. Mr. Young. No. Mr. Blumenthal. Aye. We have a McCain moment. We have a John McCain moment. Are there any senators in the chamber wishing to change his or her vote? If not, the yeas are 49. If not, the yeas are 49. The nays are 51. The motion is not agreed to. Under the previous order, the Senate stands in recess subject to the call of the chair. What does this mean? So that's ball game, as close as we're going to get to ball game for uh, the foreseeable future. And wherever John Bolton is, he's off the hook for appearing before the Senate. And I really don't think that's good news to John Bolton. I don't think that's good for the country. And I don't think that's good for the 51 Republicans who just voted against hearing testimony from a first-hand witness that the conduct that really isn't in dispute. The Republican defense descended into, yeah, he did it, but eh, don't impeach him. Here we are. This is a this is a new a new beginning in in this conversation. And as I said a little bit earlier today, it's time for the American people to step into this. And uh, the Senate has acted. Uh, the only thing left now is to acquit. And uh, we have to process all of this and assess for ourselves now. Uh, outside of the you know the formalities of a, a Senate trial, what this means for the country and what this means going forward in terms of the rule of law, the Constitution, et cetera. And what the <clears throat> Senate just did, we're, we're using shorthand when we say the Senate just blocked witnesses of any kind at the trial of President Trump. It also did more than that, uh, and people interested in gathering evidence and facts will say it did something worse than that. It ruled out of order any debate over any subpoena for any document and any witness whatsoever. That's what was on the table. Bolton obviously being the star witness and has necessarily gotten a lot of the attention. Uh, but for members of the Senate in either party, we're looking at Chuck Schumer right here, here coming to the, to the microphone and he may make some news of his own. Are we waiting for his leadership team? <laughs> Claire, you think the air came out of that room, or you think um, it was just a, a known like the, the air probably came out of the room uh, with Lamar's statement last night. I think everybody was, you know, a little bit of a zombie walk today. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've got to be here. We've got to go finish this out, but uh, this is not good. Okay, I'm going to make a brief statement. <clears throat> okay. To not allow... A witness, a document, no witnesses, no documents in an impeachment trial is a perfidy. 
It's a grand tragedy, one of the worst tragedies that the Senate has ever overcome. America will remember this day, unfortunately, where the Senate did not live up to its responsibilities, where the Senate turned away from truth and went along with a sham trial. This, if the president is acquitted with no witnesses, no documents, the acquittal will have no value because Americans will know that this trial was not a real trial. It had no witnesses, no documents. It is a tragedy on a very large scale. I will be now going up to my caucus to discuss what we're doing next. I will not talk about it here. Okay? Thanks. Senator. In other words, this has all been just a bunch of wasted time, energy, and the people that, that wind up getting ahead, which are the same people that get ahead again and again and again, are the is the news casting agencies regardless whether it be in paper form or digital form because they get paid double time and extra time extra vacation time to be able to sit and listen as others debate and I've said this all along that the people that wind up getting the better bang for the buck are in fact the news media people regardless whether it be a catastrophe or it be an election it is the news casters the broadcasters the media where do you think the, the 30 something million dollars just went to it went towards news agencies towards paying off other prime time shows that was supposed to have been showed but wind up being paid off by the American tax paying dollars. So basically this has all been just a big sham. You see there's a reason why that God, I'm going to say this to my viewers, <clears throat> there's a reason why that God has set up his judgment pertaining to end time biblical Bible prophecy according to not only the ways of the flesh but the ways of the spirit world. If it was just based solely upon the ways of the flesh it would be a sham similar to what we're looking at right here. But because the Heavenly Father in the spirit world, long about two-thirds of the book of Revelations, releases Lucifer, the Antichrist, back out into society to go and deceive the nations once more in the Gog and Magog. That defining moment will in fact be those souls of their Achilles heel, of whether or not there was any question or any doubt that they was not true form to the Lord Jesus Christ in following after the righteousness of God through the teachings of Jesus Christ, that will be the defining moment that will determine who was truly for and who was truly against. That way, whenever great fire comes down out of New Jerusalem that consumes those who was in debate, consumes those who only put on a show like they was for righteousness and, and, and for justice, they will be basically consumed, according to the Bible, and that's whenever God himself will take Lucifer, the Antichrist, the Mark of the Beast, the False Prophet, and throw them into a lake of fire and the angels that followed with them. And that's where they will burn forever and ever and ever. And hopefully, hopefully, I'm speaking from my point of view right now as a mortal man, hopefully 
there will never be another um, uprising. There will never be a revoke. There will never be a mutiny that will occur in heaven to the degree of seeing such of a controversial uprising like we have seen in the past 6,000 years since the beginning phases of Adam and Eve, hopefully there will never be another uprising again and all of humanity will be able to live in peace and harmony and that's when God will wipe away all our tears, there will be no more suffering and we will live in heaven with the Lamb forever and ever and ever and we will evolve to the next level in which what God desires for us to evolve off into. But hopefully there will never be another uprising, a, a challenge such as this uh, that has caused so much, so much harm and hurt, so much pain, so much humiliation, so much, uh, so much, so many tears because of what Satan has done to humanity. And not only towards what he's done to humanity, towards what he's done to the heavenly kingdom. The way that they have went about doing this, just as he just got through saying, has turned this into a sham. It's turned it into a joke. It has turned this into a uh, backwoods court so, uh, type scenario that there's really not going to be no way of fairness played out into the eyes of the general public pertaining to us hearing live testimony that can, in fact, affect the presidency of Donald J. Trump. Let's listen to it one more time. That way it sinks in real well in what has occurred here. In one way, I do want to say this, in one way it does distribute a form of grace or a form of pardons pertaining to his stupidity that he was charged against for a crime of trying to blackmail or trying to force the hand of another leader of a partner, an ally, it shows grace upon to the Senate that they're not willing to burn him at the stake, politically speaking, towards making him walk the plank and actually pushing him off. But in another way, it it displeases society to the degree of showing that true justice does not occur whenever they have an impeachment trial. And it's basically just a bunch of malarkey because it turns out to be nothing more than a freak show. Nothing more than a he said, she said, and you know as well as I do, they have got facts, they have got documentations, they have got the actual manuscript of who said what to who and how that they responded and reacted, just like they've got the true manuscript of 9-11 towards who planned it out and why it was planned out and how come it was not acted upon effectively and efficiently the way that it should have been. It just shows you, in one way, grace, but in another way, it shows you the dirtiness 
of our government towards how that the American people has been taking uh, for everything that we are worth. In other words, we're the people down here that does the suffering. We're the people down here that's got to be humiliated by such unjust do. We're the ones down here that uh, are embarked upon towards not being able to to uh, have the same opportunities as certain ancestors in various cultures, various generations of being able to strive towards becoming a good, honest worker, a good, honest uh, person to the degree of becoming successful, unless you're born with a silver spoon in your mouth. It just shows you how less and less and less that this government called America, the America government, has become so biased um, in, in the degree that it has. The proper right thing for the president to have done. If he truly done what they said that he done with the wrong motive, with the wrong intent, was to stood before the American people and gave a honest uh, briefing to the American people that I know that I shouldn't have done what I done and please pardon my ignorance for me doing what I done. That would have been the proper thing to have done. But because you got all these twists and turns and all these pronouns and you got all these uh, proper way versus improper way versus policy making versus breaking policy making um, it's it's become such of a complex uh, tangled web up there in the Washington DC in which everybody has known this. this this isn't nothing new you know pertaining to their dishonesty and and how they basically wheel and deal in favor of themselves versus being in favor of we the people this isn't nothing new they've been doing this now ever since the phases of the Watergate era and and even through the Clinton uh, impeachment trial and now we're faced off on another deal that is just as shameful and disgraceful as what has ever been. I thought that there was going to be someone else that was going to stand towards making a vote of either 50-50 versus 49-50 or 51 49. I thought that there was a hundred. I don't know if there was a neutral person there or if there was only uh, 49 to be accounted for. I mean, uh, 99 to be accounted for. I don't know what the deal was on that. I didn't quite catch that. But it's obvious towards what has occurred here. Let's listen one more time. Okay, I'm going to make a brief statement. <clears throat> okay to not allow a witness, a document, no witnesses, no documents in an impeachment trial is a perfidy. It's a grand tragedy, one of the worst tragedies that the Senate has ever overcome. America will remember this day, unfortunately, where the Senate did not live up to its responsibilities, where the Senate turned away from truth and went along with a sham trial. This, if the president is acquitted with no witnesses, no documents, the acquittal will have no value because Americans will know that this trial was not a real trial. It had no witnesses, no documents. It is a tragedy on a very large scale. I will be now going up to my caucus to discuss what we're doing next. I will not talk about it. So if this does anything, it proves that the system really is broke. The system is broken because you no longer have an effective system that can pull the ranks in the regards towards truth and justice. 
If it does anything, that's what it proves today. So by and large, what should happen is most every stinking one of them should be fired, beginning at this level on down. And of course, there's nothing that the American people can do because they're already in there. They're already there. So the only thing that the people can do is to vote them out on their next term. Which will be, what, two years after the president term. So it just goes on and on and on. It's just a lingering effect towards how dishonest and how corrupt that our government has become. And it's really sad. Because there's so many lives that get tangled up, that, that fall through the cracks, that it just completely destroys families, it completely destroys businesses, it completely destroys what our fundamental values is supposed to be about. You know, to sit and hear all these experts and to hear about uh, all our presidents as far as what that they believed in and, and how that they believed and what that they believed in. And it basically opens up opens up a green light towards the wrath of God falling upon to the American people. And until the American people get enough of hardship that falls up into their lives, uh, we're going to see more and more corruption that's just going to stink. It's just going to it's just going to mole. It's just going to fester. It's just going to uh, be like a a cancer or an allergy. It's just going to spread, and it's just going to become more and more. Um, um, sickening really I hope that that not be the case but obviously because they were, they're putting the brakes on this and I don't know if it's because it, it was grinding too slow and it's taking too much time out of people's lives but it's obvious that they're not concerned about true justice or truth because if they was you know it's almost like they went right up to right up to the goalpost it kind of reminds me of the Super Bowl whenever the Titans got right up to the end of the 100-yard mark. But they could not get over that one yard to make a touchdown. That's what it reminds me of. Using a Super Bowl as an analogy. That's what it reminds me of. What you just got through witnessing is that they got right up to the goalpost, but they didn't score. Out it here. Okay. Sad. Thanks. Sad. Senator McCaskill, the Democrats will now gather. Uh, you know that majority leader very well. A minority leader very well. Yes, I do. And um, he is a dear, dear friend. Uh, I'd, I'd, I'd give him five bucks if he could take that back and not say perfidy. We're busy looking it up. <laughs> yeah, it's bad. It's bad. Um, but uh, it, it it's a travesty. It's disgusting. There's a lot of... What does that word mean, pravity? Of good, you know, m my hero Harry Truman always believed in, you know, nickel words, not <clears throat> $25 words. And so um, he's frustrated, and he... But I think he is, they've watched the Republicans fight today. So the Republicans know they're in a little bit of trouble. Or why would they be so worried about appearances now? Uh, and that's got to put a little wind in the Democrats' sails, that they have fought cleanly and hard for witnesses and documents which the American people get and they support. And they are the party that fought with everything they could to get witnesses and documents along with a stellar performance by the House managers. So um, we'll see now uh, whether or not they're going to try to go into the wee hours or whether they're going to adjourn until Monday. Uh, and Claire, it's more than appearances. I mean, it's, it's they've now in a position <clears throat> where they've done the White House's bidding. They've marched off a clip, a clip over daily revelations from the sitting National Security Advisor who was there and a first-hand witness to the conduct for which Trump was impeached. I mean, they don't know what's going to be in the paper at 8 o'clock tonight or 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Yeah, and I just want to, uh, we pause briefly as we saw Chuck Schumer come out and as Claire said. I think 
just the opposite. I think they already knew how that the vote was going to be and that it there was going to show it to the American people towards it being close, just like a football game, but it wasn't close enough. In other words, they got it right up to the goalpost, but they didn't get it there. I think they had already sat down and discussed how that they was going to turn this into a fiasco on American live national TV that now all nations, all countries all over the world set has watched this unfold just like the American people or those that was concerned about fairness and about true justice. And now they all make their own decisions towards what has occurred here. Because trust me, there's been just as many Russians, there's been just as many Canadians, there's been just as many Mexicans, there's been just as many people from Honduras and Brazil and South America, there's been just as many officials from, from uh, uh, Australia, Europe, England, France, um, China, Japanese, all over the world that has devoted time and energy and money to sit and listen to all this haggling, all this squabbling, all this backbiting that has now escalated into what you're now witnessing on live national TV. Use some, uh, so what was it, 50 cents? <clears throat> so for the benefit of time, I'm going to fast forward this and try to sift through the important stuff versus the non-important stuff. He is a twin. So let's take it. Country, uh, the idea that the Senate is now engaged in a cover-up. Um, Bolton's story is going to come out. There's just no question about that. It's either going to come out when his book is released or beforehand. And so the only benefit of stopping his story from coming out now uh, is so that the American public can't pressure Republican senators to vote against acquittal. Uh, so we are about to meet um, Democrats to try to consider what our options are going forward here. We believe we may have parliamentary um, uh, options still available to try to force some of these votes. Uh, it may be that McConnell is going to try to keep us through the night to get this done as quickly uh, as possible. Clearly, I think as I heard you talking about before, I, I was brought on the air, they are very nervous that the drip, drip, drip of these Bolton allegations is going to make acquittal harder and harder. And so there's a big pressure inside the Republican caucus right now as we speak to get this done as quickly as possible. Um, I, I hope that's not the conclusion. I hope we have real deliberations either behind closed doors or in public, um, but that's all being decided as we speak. Senator, what was the sense today? I, I know it's been a bit of a roller coaster, at least for us watching from the outside of, of, of the um, reading tea leaves of the Republicans who seemed potentially open to doing what 75% of Americans wanted, which was to hear from witnesses. Was there a moment when today's revelation came out, pushing that timeline so much earlier back to May, implicating the president's lead uh, lawyer and the impeachment proceeding itself. Did, did you have any conversations? Did, did anyone sort of, you know, look uh, clenched or, or girded for the political pain that may follow their vote today? Uh, well, I, I mean, there is going to be real uh, political pain sure. here, and I, I think people need to, you know, understand that voters aren't going to forget this. And as more and more of these revelations continue, to the thing about the political pain that they're talking about. It's not just based upon political pain. If it was something embarrassing that people could say their apologies over is one thing. But as we get further and further into this, as far as seeing global environmental crisis changes pertaining to weather phenomenons, and as we get further into this towards seeing possibly the wrath of God falling upon to society, towards God basically allowing for Satan to bring injury and harm 
to not only the people over in China, but possibly the people all over the world in regard to now this, this, uh, um, this disease, this, this horrible thing that's happening to the people over in China could be now escalating and, and going over to other parts of the world, including our country. It's not just political harm. Whenever a nation, a culture, gets so out of focus that they're no longer staying within the guidelines and the rims of God and the rules of God, that's whenever God basically no longer protects that group of people. He takes that umbrella of protection and removes it from that society and lets whatever befalls upon to that group of people in a harsh type way. And it's not that God is doing it. It's that God has set back and taken the umbrella of protection out from underneath. And now Satan is having a heyday up onto that group or that society. There's a reason why that Job's life was protected. You know why Job's life was protected in the Bible? It was because God found favor in Job. Just like God found favor in Noah. Just like God found favor in Abraham. Just like God found favor in some of the other prophets uh, that was attacked. But God protected them. He protected them to the point that they still achieved what that they were supposed to achieve, including the Lord Jesus Christ. Because if Jesus Christ was not supposed to have been crucified and executed the way that he was crucified and executed, I guarantee you God would not have sent back and allowed for that to have occurred to Jesus Christ on a physical form, in the physical form. There was a plan for Jesus to come and go the way that he come and gone because he had to basically be the lamb that was that was slain from the foundations of the earth for all a man's sins. He had to become that sacrifice. And that's the way that it was planned out. So as these perils continue to keep happening with our government, it's not just happening on a social form. It's also happening on an economical, as well as a spiritual, as well as a financial and, and a uh, profoundly a spiritual form uh, that can bring consequences in areas like you, like you couldn't even imagine. You couldn't imagine. Because once God gets enough of it, it's kind of like the curses that fall, that fell upon to the children of Israel. Um, at that time, there was a spokesman, which was, which was uh, a liberator by the name of Moses, that helped to protect a great deal of the wrath that fell upon to Pharaoh's bunch. But at the same time, you have to be realistical and understand that not only did it bring hard, hardship upon to the children of Pharaoh, Pharaoh's group, but it also brought hardship in the beginning of, of God's chosen pertaining to Moses' people. So you gotta you got to look at the facts. You can't just look at just one side of it. Whenever things get out of kilter, and God has to intervene by, by taking away that umbrella of protection. He's doing that for a reason. He's trying to teach. He's bringing a learning uh, example into society. Some will learn from it and become stronger on account of it. And some will become hardened and they won't hang around very much longer. It's kind of like whenever I went down to Katrina and I worked the Katrina damage down there. I found two major groups. Group number one was humble, meek, 
and very, very merciful and sorrowful for the things that they had done or not done because they knew that that was some sort of sign or wrath that come from the Almighty or that God pulled away the umbrella that allowed for Satan to come in there and do what he done. But there was also another group of people that hardened their hearts to the point that if you even mentioned God, if you even mentioned Jesus Christ to them, they would just about uh, uh, want to fight you in the middle of the streets because they didn't want to hear nothing about God. Well, you know, those people that had that had such resentment towards the lesson that was supposed to have been learnt down there, those people, I'm sure, didn't hang around very much longer. Because once God realizes your true intent, where your heart is, then he'll just eliminate you. He'll take you out. He'll take you out through, through a heart attack. He'll take you out through a stroke. He'll take you out through cancer. He'll take you out through other means, bad car wreck, um, whatever. He'll take you out. Or if he doesn't take you out, he will allow for Satan to take you out. In other words, he'll lift that, that umbrella of protection and he'll say, all right, all right, Lucifer, there he is. Do as you wish. Because now you have proven your true identity to God and now you're no longer considered God's. And because you're no longer considered God's own, own property, now God will lift that hedge around you just like he done Job. He lifted that hedge, but he told Satan, you can do anything you want to to him, but I'm, I'm telling you now, this guy here, he is one of ours. You can do anything you want to to Job, but you can't kill him. And ultimately, in the end, Job hung in there, and Job wound up getting ten times more of what he ever thought about in the first part of his life during the last part of his life because God abundantly blessed Job. You don't think that God allows for stuff like that to happen to our lives too as well? Sure he does. Sure he does. If there's any question or any doubt, like I was telling you earlier, the way God works in true justice form towards whether or not you're truly loyal to him is because things is not just going to be judged in the physical form, but they're also going to be judged in the spiritual form towards those that just barely made it in by the skim of their teeth, uh-huh, those people will be tried in the final spiritual trial. And if those follow after Lucifer the final last time, great fire, according to the Bible, falls from heaven and consumes them. Now that's the way that I have interpreted true justice according to God's justice. And he narrows it down. He corners them up. He corners society up. And just like he said, that ultimately in the end, before it's over with, every knee will bow and every tongue will profess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And if they're not willing to do it in this lifetime, they'll be forced to do it in the lifetime to come. Ultimately, in the spirit world, those who are true to God, God will know. In this uh, purging procedure, God will know who is true to him and who was only just a bunch of fake phony balonies. To come out, more and more voters are going to wonder why on earth the Senate didn't consider information that was available to them. Uh, and so I, from the beginning, was amongst those who thought there were definitely going to be witnesses, if not because the Republicans thought it was in the best interest of the country, because they knew there would be enormous political damage to them if they engaged in something that could be easily categorized as a cover up. And so, you know, to me, you know, this is first and foremost awful for the country, but I just think this makes the job of re election for a lot of my Republican friends much, much more difficult. And why they don't understand that um, maybe due to the fact that Trump uh, just has a death grip on his party right now that makes them blind even to their own personal uh, political fortunes. Chris, this Have you ever seen the like of so much security? 
so many men and women in uniform walking around amongst all those shysters or those lynchmen or whatever you want to call them politics politicians in there have you ever seen the like of so many men and women in uniform just to maintain law and order it's clear. Um, today we got the uh, revelation from Bolton that Cipollone was in one of the original meetings that kind of hatched up this plan. And I'm curious, has anyone thought about what action you can take against Cipollone being a fact witness and trying to be a lawyer at the same time and making representations as a lawyer that he knows to be untrue based on Bolton's revelations that we learned about today? Are, is anyone thinking about ways you can hold him accountable vis-a-vis -vis his law license? Yeah, I, so this is all happening so fast, Claire. <laughs> as, uh, as you know, we are you know, trying to manage the schedule of impeachment while at the same time dealing with these enormous revelations. There have been some casual conversations amongst uh, senators about uh, what the potential avenues of redress are. We now have a little bit better window into... She's talking about casualties of war collateral damage, political casualties of war. Back it up and listen to what she's got to say. Why? Listen to the question. Listen to, to how she presents it. Even to their own personal uh, political fortunes. Chris, this is Claire. Um, today we got the uh, revelation from Bolton that Cipollone was in one of the original meetings that kind of hatched up this plan. And I'm curious... Has anyone thought about what action you can take against Cipollone being a fact witness and trying to be a lawyer at the same time and making representations as a lawyer that he knows to be untrue based on Bolton's revelations that we learned about today? Or is anyone thinking about ways you can hold him accountable vis-a-vis -vis his law license? Yeah, so this is all happening so fast, Claire, as, uh, as you know, we are you know, trying to manage the schedule of impeachment while at the same time dealing with these enormous revelations. There have been some casual conversations amongst uh, senators about uh, what the potential avenues of redress are. We now have a little bit better window into why uh, Pat Cipollone did not want at all costs John Bolton to come before the Senate because John Bolton was going to directly implicate the president's chief lawyer who is making the case in this crisis scheme. Um, but yeah, I think there's going to be uh, conversations about uh, about what the next proper steps are uh, for a lawyer who has very possibly grievously misrepresented uh, his own role in this case. Uh, Chris Murphy, Democrat of Connecticut, thank you. We're watching on other screens your colleagues go into um, uh, caucus. We appreciate See, I think, personally, this is just my opinion, don't cost you nothing. I personally think that because this is turning out the way that it's turning out towards a broken system, this should motivate the American people that much more towards reinventing a brand new electrical digital system. In other words, um, renege or default on the $23 trillion debt that is nothing more than a uh, uh, beast of burden to the American people. Start all over again and do it this time with a digital currency. That way it can be more controlled in the sense of stopping a lot of these cash underground dark movements of how the, the mobsters are still getting rich off of drugs and getting rich off of, of illegal uh, trade and and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, all the drugs, all the dope uh, that, that people are still making money off of. Um, this proves that the system is so corrupt and so tainted. Even though they tried to do this step for step, to me, this just verifies this is the 
straw that has broke the camel's back in the degree of saying, okay, enough is enough. Because if we continue on this same path, it's pretty obvious who's going to suffer the consequences. And it's going to be not just those senators, but it's going to be we the people. Because God will do just exactly what I said that God will do towards taking away that umbrella of protection. And if we think that we have seen hardships upon the hardships here in the United States pertaining to massive weather events, regardless whether it's flooding, fires, hurricanes, tornadoes, or whatever, all we're doing is opening ourselves up for not only more of this to be happening because of our unjust government, but in actuality towards it intensifying. Now, like I told you all ago, this does not cost you nothing to hear what I have to say. I'm saying to this, I'm saying to my viewers freely and openly, but from all indications, looking at the dots pertaining to the massive, horrendous, global warming crisis. This is what is causing it because God is removing his protection because we the people continue to bite the hand that, that is feeding us and because of it, God's going to quit feeding us. You might say, well, God feeds us by bringing showers to our agriculture communities. God feeds us by this. God feeds us by that. He does. But just because we're getting adequate rains today don't necessarily mean that we'll get adequate rains tomorrow. Just because we get adequate this today doesn't mean that we'll get adequate that tomorrow. God has a way towards bringing humanity and straightening humanity up and selectively doing it without destroying the whole bunch. He done that one time in the era of Noah in the Great Flood. And he brought so much misery to the innocent that that's whenever God looked upon a man and said that he was he regretted that he had even created mankind. See, it wasn't just mankind that suffered. Look at all the animals. Look at all the birds. Look at all. Look at everything that, that went through great suffering during that time. Do you think that that brought pleasure in the eyes of the Creator, the very Creator that created all this? Why did God have to do that? Was because of the corruption that society had taken on. The wickedness, the evil, the sin. That's why God had to do that. Appreciate you spend a Thank few you. minutes with us and apologize to our viewers. That's called the Will Rogers location because the statue behind it in a marble building, the networks have locations next to each other with no buffer. And it is, I don't know how they can speak. He, and, and he, it's hard to sometimes hear yourself talk. He was great. Uh, he was a good sport. I mean, it is such a good point and it is so Trumpian that every disclosure, and this, this disclosure was about Trump's role in Ukraine, ends up implicating someone else because they're all in on it. I mean, in this this was the testimony of Gordon Sondland. This was the testimony of Fiona Hill. This was the testimony um, of everybody who, who had any sort of role in it. Let, let Parnas, um, the other bombshell that dropped today. The other, other bombshell. His, that, his, the his, letter you read from The bombshell Bonnie. like four hours ago, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's, I, I think one of the things that, um, in, in listening to a number of uh, folks here on this, the thing that keeps sticking in my head is that when I look, you see this on phone, you go, wait a minute, they told us what? 10 days ago, what this was going to be. Yeah. You know, and we went through this whole machinations of, you know, having uh, Schumer put amendments out there and have them voted down, you know, mm -hmm. to get witnesses and on the on the idea that, oh, when you will go through this and then we're going to listen. Right, 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 right. How do you now look at the country? It, it looked the country in the eye in light of everything else that's now come out today, even and say, nah, 
There's no need for any witnesses. I, I just don't know how. I was trying to figure out how that I thought that I was going to label this. And I guess about the only way that I know how to label this is chaotic. Absolutely chaotic. Because a lot of this is contradictory to itself. It's an oxymoron as far as it being one way but turning out to be some, some other way. Um, it's, it's not productive. If anything, it's, it's anti-productive and it's almost like it's so sad because it's, it's so much of a waste. So much of a waste, you know, let's just, let's just, uh, round this off and say that this ordeal cost the taxpayers $40 million, providing that it stops today, providing that it stops tonight. $40 million. $40 million would have went a long way. $40 million would have went a long way down in L.A. County, down towards Los Angeles, pertaining to the homeless situation that they're dealing with down there. $40 million would have went a long way as far as research on the coronavirus. $40 million went a, went a long way towards helping pertaining to senior citizens. $40 million went a long way towards looking at the problems with our illegal immigrants on the southern border. It's, it's just unbelievable towards how much of a waste that this has been. How oh, Republicans think they reconcile that with voters. I think that the senator was correct in saying, when you go back home, unless you're in a really deep red state where everybody's got ya ya Trump, mm -hmm. um, those town hall meetings are going to get real rife this summer. Uh, and this fall, your opponents have got some great commercials to run against you. And you're going to be doing a lot of explaining to your constituents how you could cut off justice. Portman needs to work on his cut it off. fake phone call game. He just walked past the cameras. And was so clearly not on the phone. Yeah, no. It was totally a fake phone call game. Because <laughs> no one actually talked to I'm guilty. I've ass. done it before. <laughs> We've all done it. Stones. Just, I've done a fake phone call. We couldn't get away with that when I was chairman. Tighten up your game. Bad. I mean, he got <laughs> past the cameras. We just watched him drop the... You know what's different about this um, conflict than other conflicts? It reminds me of the health care vote. Because the anti-health care vote was emotional and passionate. So when I did town halls around the health care vote, I may have said this on the air before, but I'll never forget it. We, we always started our, our town halls with a prayer, and the preacher got booed mm. in Jefferson City, Missouri, mm. while he was praying. That's how high the emotion was. They were tough, tough town halls. People were angry. People were red-faced. And that's the way Democrats across this country are going to be for those senators when they come home. It is gonna be that same level of emotion. Mm -hmm. And I think about my state, for Roy Blunt and Josh Hawley, it is very hard to get where they may wanna go in Missouri without going through St. Louis and Kansas City. Mm -hmm. Those are rough airports for them right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> those are rough cab drivers. Uh, those, are, those are people, because in those two places, they are dominated by the Democratic Party and they are very unhappy with what they're doing right now. So. Um, and that will be true all over the country. It, they're going to they're gonna feel this. This isn't going to be, oh, the phones will die down next week and everything will be fine. No. This one's going to hurt. Oh, and yeah. you know what's interesting is that the, the public processed this as the two separate questions that it was. The polls always reflected that, and the polls never really intersected. That's it was right. 51 to 56 percent. Um, on removal from office, which is real, which would be a headline, a banner in any other time. In the time of Trump, we sort of just figured that was the, the amount of people that wanted him gone now. But it was it grew from 61 to 64 to 71 to 75 percent of all Americans who wanted witnesses. So this is a stop you in the airport and scream in your face moment. I've, I've had a few of those myself, and this is one of them. We just watched some vignettes uh, while we've been talking. Yeah. Uh, uh, Romney and, and Collins, Collins walking, two yes votes. getting yeah. passed in the hallway by Chris Murphy returning from our interview. Uh, Lindsey Graham has been speaking to uh, print reporters in the hallway. 
A quick break for our coverage. We won't go anywhere. We hope you don't. We'll be. Lower. This has been just sickening. And unless we see somebody speaking other than the commentators, let's breeze through this for time purposes. probably just fast forward at least 30 minutes. Now we're back on again. Let's stop. Some amendments, Democratic amendments we would imagine this evening. Monday closing arguments, Tuesday and Wednesday. Let's back up. Sounds like he may be saying something important. reading something stop and into the next couple of days my co-anchor is very excited about this hey jeff go ahead all right so so here's what uh, senator roy blunt of uh, missouri is telling my colleague leanne caldwell he says the leaders have agreed to a resolution tonight that will do the following it would allow for four amendments tonight Nothing happening over this weekend, so the senators would come back on Monday. Monday is when you would see those closing arguments, evenly divided, uh, six hours, three hours for the president's defense team, three hours for the House managers to make those closing arguments. Tuesday and Wednesday would be devoted uh, to the public deliberations, and then the vote on the final judgment, those two articles of impeachment, would happen at Wednesday at 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Uh, Pacific. So, interesting thing here, there is no process here for any sort of closed deliberations that happened during the Clinton impeachment process. Mm. And this does include days of deliberations, which again, mm. tracks with the Clinton standard. So that's the news. Nothing happening this weekend. Some votes on some amendments, Democratic amendments, we would imagine this evening. Monday, closing arguments. Tuesday and Wednesday, deliberations by those senators were Every senator who wants to would be able to state his or her case on the record, and all of it culminating in a vote on Wednesday at 4 p.m. Eastern. Guys. Jeff Bennett, thank you for that reporting. Claire McCaskill, question to you. Do you know anything further? And a, and a backup question for me. What if John Bolton shows up in a televised interview between now and all of this? Well, I, I think if he shows up on a televised interview, it is more trouble for the president. I'm not sure that it changes the ultimate outcome yeah. in terms of acquittal because we've already seen Lamar Alexander says he believes it. He did it. He just doesn't think he should be removed from office for it. So if that's the hill they're going to die on, that this conduct occurred and this was terrible, and but we don't want to remove him from office. That's the hill they're going to die on. Um, I think they'll regret it down the road when this kind of conduct occurs again. But these votes tonight, are they show votes? And well, they kind of are because but, you know, let's you know, if you are frustrated and you want to make a point, then you drive and you make that point as long as you possibly can. And they want to fight with every breath they've got in them to the very end of the line. So the, the motions will be um, all docs, wit all witnesses, a vote on Bolton and um, one other thing. So there's four Democratic votes they'll get tonight and then they will vote on mcconnell's rule to finish out the rest of this process which will just put in to a resolution all of the dates that jeff well, just get, just gave us. and jeff bennett just broke some major news uh that the plan would be to try to get open deliberations 
We've heard about the precedents. The Clinton deliberations were closed. There was an effort to open them up on the theory that on uh, a matter of this import, the public should hear the senators deliberate as they explain themselves. We were talking earlier before the vote about the power of explanation. There was a majority that wanted to do that last time, but not a supermajority. It was about 59 senators last time, so it wasn't public. What Jeff Bennett's reporting, uh, according to a Republican source, and we'll, we'll see it, we'll follow it all tonight, is that they're looking to get public deliberations. Now, under the precedent, that would traditionally take a supermajority, which itself is interesting that for all of this partisan debate we've been covering, both sides would see it as they have enough interest, mutual interest in doing this in public to get over 67 senators on that issue. And that would be a new thing. Well, I think part of that would goes to the fact that some Republicans want to explain publicly as much as they can. Being a shell for the White House. That's right. Their their vote. Uh, and and to that point, to actually be out there defending and standing and making the president's case. Because, because sometimes Twitter is not enough. Twitter is not enough. Uh, Senator exactly. Maisie Hirono, Democrat of Hawaii, uh, is with us, having just exited the Good Democratic day. Caucus <laughs> meeting. Senator, thank you. Tell us everything Chuck Sorry. Schumer said to you, especially <laughs> the stuff not supposed to leave the room. You'll have to kill me if I did that. But what we did, what we'll we did you. was a. <laughs> I wish I could rely on that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Look, we just took a vote that was really the crux of our whole uh, approach to this impeachment tr uh, trial, which was we wanted witnesses, relevant witnesses and documents. So we just took a vote on that, which to me was the most critical vote uh, of this whole thing up to. I want to apologize to my viewers. I, I didn't quite get the math on what I was looking at a while ago, whenever they was having the vote. It is a hundred votes. Um, obviously, I must, I guess I should go back to school and learn how to count. Uh, 49 plus 51 is 100 votes. Um, I guess what throwed me is that 51 votes needed um, in regard to the nay. In other words, um, they are not going to have witnesses today. So I want to apologize for not understanding the voting process uh, because there was a hundred that was there today. I don't know how I got thrown. Maybe the one throwed me. I mean, my, not doing my math correctly, but I want to apologize to my viewers about that because there was a hundred here today. Sorry about that. You know, when you're dealing with mass confusion, sometimes it confuses us all towards the proceedings of what they're doing and how that they're doing it. But it's very obvious that the nays won. They do not want witnesses um, for whatever reason. You can speculate whatever you want to speculate, um, which once more turns this more into a sham type trial versus an actual trial because if it's an actual trial you're going to have witnesses you're going to have people that's going to be objection to whatever's being said and how that they're saying it and this has just turned out to be a show and i think the american people are going to be able to see through this that basically 35 to 40 million dollars just got through thrown out into the out into the lake somewhere, or out into the river somewhere, that was just a total waste of time, energy, um, in these regards. I don't know why they're doing what they're doing, but I'm sure it's going to be an opposing factor to a whole lot of people in reading this and understanding this. Kind of like the difference between your electrical votes versus your majority votes. Um, I never understood why America still to this day wants to lean towards continually having the electro le electronical votes uh, in various areas towards it having as much meaning because to me it doesn't matter if you're in a state that only has 2 million versus a state that's got 40 million. A person's vote is a person's vote. 
and it shouldn't be accounted as being more prevalent or more valuable in one state versus another to me. That's just my opinion. And the way things are looking, I don't think that uh, even the two senators who uh, voted to have witnesses, are, I, I don't know how they're going to vote on conviction. So I'm, I'm prepared to talk about how uh, uh, significant this vote was to continue to hold the line for this president who is totally vindictive and he's got $400 million of money to go after anybody who dares to speak out against him and that would be a double for any Republicans who crosses him. So there you have it and I think this is a very uh, significant and sad day for our country but we can expect this president to continue to do things that will uh, be probably uh, impeachable. So we know that he has very little impulse control and who knows what else he's been doing. And then the bombshell today, because we've been hearing for hours from the Republicans that there was no connection between the holding of the aid with the investigations. And then the bombshell today in the New York Times that there was in fact a meeting in May where all these people were there, including Cipollone, who probably has some huge uh, uh, legal, ethical issues that he's probably gonna con have to contend with because he argued that there was no connection. And, and you know what, if uh, Bolton's revelations are accurate, this is why we wanted Bolton, among other reasons, uh, he's lied to the tribunal, that would be us. So he's got some issues that he's gonna have to deal with. So going forward, uh, we're gonna have a president that uh, truly believes he can do anything he wants. And, and I framed it as we're witnessing the, the crowning of the uh, president with Mitch McConnell holding his crown and the Republicans holding his train. Senator, if the Republicans um, are as in line on the acquittal vote as they were on witnesses, it, it, it's safe to assume at least 51 will vote to acquit this president from a fact pattern that they really aren't publicly disputing, that he sought to cheat in the 2020 right. election. Um, he got caught doing it. No one's disputing yes. that he was involved in holding up the aid or that he was pursuing investigations right. into Joe Biden. What are your fears about the election ahead? What this uh, vote says is he did it, so what? So that's Lamar Alexander. You know, he did, assuming he did all of this. And in fact, the uh, Trump team acceded to that too. They, they pretty much said, yeah, okay, he, he did it, so what? So the so what means that the president can ask some other foreign country, which he already did with China, to interfere with our elections. He might find another pot of money to use as a bribe to get another country to do what he wants. And so we're going to have an unfair president. And he still has a lot of time to do damage. Mm -hmm. So this is clear, and the rest of you, we've watched this president. He has very little impulse control. He's probably going to expand his Muslim ban because of the Supreme Court went his way. He's probably going to add some more countries. He's going to probably go after people's Social Security benefits because he's already said that to pay for the 1.5 trillion in tax cuts for the 1%. And he lied at his rally when he told everybody, I'm the one, him, protecting people with pre-existing conditions when it is his administration and Attorney General Barr in court right now to totally eliminate the Affordable Care Act, including all the protections for people with pre-existing conditions. So health care is going to be a huge issue going forward. He's already been doing all kinds of things to subvert to undo the, the uh, Health Care Act, and then he's going to go after Social Security, and he's going to continue to go after immigrants. and. Stay tuned because he's going to continue more emboldened than ever with any kind of acquittal vote uh, to do what he would do. I think it is really incumbent upon the rest of us to point out the dangers to our country. I just want to add one more thing. You know, from a, a, a checks and balances, he's a president who believes he can do anything he wants under Article 2 of the Constitution. Mm -hmm. And that is the reason that he thought he, he decided he could ignore all of the subpoenas and uh, he could tell his entire administration, none of you will testify. This is the kind of uh, posture that someone who believes he can do anything he wants and he has no regard for checks and balances. So that's pretty much out the window. If, if uh, a congressional committee wants to get information out of this administration, uh, this 
this whole decision and, and where the Republicans are uh, on presidential power does not make it very likely that there's going to be much cooperation from this administration for us to do our oversight responsibilities. Senator Mizzi Hirono from the noisiest location on earth, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for finding thank the you. time for us. Uh, good sure. night and uh, aloha. Good night. In other words, what she just got through saying that the American people has a tyrant as a president, the same thing as a communist ruler that thinks that he's above the law and he can do anything that he wants to do, and there ain't a daggum thing that the American voters can do about it. That's what she just said. Because the way that this trial hearing, this vote just got through unveiling itself. Wow. Who would have ever thought, according to the founders and our ancestors, that we would be where we are right now in 2020? Who would have ever thought that we would be facing off in such of a dilemma such as we're facing off on right now. They know that he done what he done. The vast majority of them believe that he done what he done illegitimately. But they're still letting it slide giving him a green light by saying it's okay. Even though he has not stood in front of the American cameras and gave an explanation, an open, fair, honest explanation of why he done what he done. He'll go to the next rally and he'll be like... Uh, uh, Jerry Springer and he'll rally up the people the way that he usually does in oohs and ahs and now she's talking about how that he's going to be working behind the scenes in behind the doors towards once more trying to hurt the disability and the social security, the retirement societies that solely depend upon their livelihood off of what they get today. I've never seen so much sadness than what has befallen upon to the American people today. May God have mercy on us all. This will end this particular presentation of this particular day. That has been a sad day for the American history. Good luck to all of us and shalom. Very sad.